Riders in a New York City subway train pile up in a corner after a man got shot by his own gun. Police officers say the incident occurred after an altercation between two men turned into a violent brawl. More details on this later in the news. Good evening, I am Nina Ritchie Alago Flores. This is Matanang Aguila International. Now for the headlines. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. meets with Czech President Peter Pavel at Prague Castle. Solon warns the UNESCO Geopark recognition of Bohol may be revoked due to controversial resort. Russia marks the first day of its presidential polls. SpaceX's Starship successfully reaches outer space on its third launch. And Disney Plus is set to premiere the Eras Tour Taylor's version. Washington, D.C. London Bureau of Papua New Guinea. In New York, New York. Washington, D.C. Matanang Aguila. Matanang Aguila. Matanang Aguila. For Mata. Matanang Aguila International. Trusted. Connected. On point. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is on the second day of his state visit to Czech Republic. The chief executive has met with his her, or his Czech counterpart, President Peter Pavel, at the Prague Castle. President Pavel and I had a very productive meeting uh, this morning discussing a, uh, a range of topics. We are only just beginning to appreciate the huge potential of our cooperation in various areas of mutual interest to our two countries. This was followed by a bilateral meeting between the two nation leaders where they discussed issues on cooperation and multilateral partnerships. The two presidents also talked about cooperation between the Philippines and Czechia in trade and investment, agriculture, green economy and others. President Marcos also witnessed the signing of a joint communique to establish the labor consultation mechanism between the Department of Migrant Workers and the Czech Ministry of Labor and Social Affairs. Under the agreement, Czechia it has increased the quota for Filipino migrant workers to 10,300 from 5,500 per year starting this May 2024. President Marcos also shared the new movements in the West Philippine and South China Sea issue along with Manila's position on it. Czech President Peter Pavel said his nation's agriculture minister is set to visit the Philippines' agriculture sector. The said visit is aimed at establishing cooperation between the nation or the two nations to support the initiative on food security of one's country. Czech Minister Mari Kabiborni is scheduled to visit the Philippines next week as part of the Central European nation's goal to bolster the cooperation in agriculture with Manila. Future meetings uh, will continue with that dur uh, during Mr. President's visit in the Czech Republic in Prague, but also in the future. Very soon, our Minister of Agriculture shall visit uh, the Philippines with a numerous delegation of our businessmen with specific, uh, particular plans to offer. Czech President Pavel also disclosed that the delegation will also bring business companies that are interested in investing in the Philippines, especially in the agriculture sector. Agriculture Minister Biborni would also meet with Agriculture Secretary Francisco Tio Laurel Jr., as well as lead a business forum in Makati City on March 21. The new Japanese ambassador Kazuya Endo has arrived in the Philippines, assuming the post left by former ambassador Koshikawa Kazuhiko. Endo released a video message marking his arrival in Manila and to show his heartfelt appreciation of the honor, or honor bestowed upon him. Mabuhay. I've just touched down in the Philippines, ready to dive in collaborate with the dynamic Filipino community and elevate our relations. I'm committed to building even stronger ties between our nations. Maraming salamat po. 
The envoy believes that the robust ties binding Japan and the Philippines have set the stage for the golden age of strategic partnership. He added that the country's relations are expanding in various areas, from economy and security to cultural and people-to-people -people exchanges. Moreover, Ando looks forward to collaborating with the Filipino community to further elevate the country's relations, imploring people to aspire a future defined by strength and ties, shared prosperity, and enduring friendship. In November of 2024, the new ambassador was notably in Manila, joining Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's visit to the country. Defense Secretary Gilberto Teodoro Jr. has underscored the critical needs for implementing sustainable solutions to mitigate the adverse impacts of the El Nino phenomenon in the Philippines. Secretary Chodoro specially or specifically highlighted the importance of constructing additional dams and water impounding systems as part of these sustainable solutions. These infrastructure projects or projects not only protect the environment but also safeguard the well-being of communities vulnerable to water scarcity and other related challenges. Chodoro stated that proactive measures are essential to address the impacts of climate change effectively and emphasized the Department of Defense's commitment to environmental protection and disaster risk reduction. As part of these efforts, he also spearheaded the launch of the Gift of a Tree online application, which offers a long-term solution to combat climate change by facilitating the purchase and donation of seedlings through an online platform. Bohol 3rd District Representative Christine Alexi Tutor has underscored the potential risk of losing Bohol's UNESCO Global Geopark designation. This prestigious recognition by or was granted by UNESCO just last year, 2023. Representative Tutor highlighted the importance of safeguarding this designation, saying that it not only reflects the unique features of the Chocolate Hills, but also contributes to the global recognition of or and popularity of the region. She further emphasized the collective responsibility of both authorities and the public and or in preserving the beauty and integrity of the Chocolate Hills. Students can now take their periodic and final examinations despite having unsettled tuition fees and other financial obligations to the school. This is after President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. signed into law the Anti-No Permit, No Exam Act or Republic Act No. 11984. The Anti-No Permit, No Exam Act mandates all public and private schools to allow disadvantaged students to take their examinations without required permits. It also covers higher education institutions and technical vocational institutions that offer long-term courses exceeding one year. Senator Ramon Bongrevilla Jr., who is the principal author of the bill lauded its enactment, saying that no youth should worry that they could not take an exam or that they could not graduate because they have no funds. But the schools are authorized to require the submission of a promissory note, withhold records and credentials of students, and exercise other legal and administrative remedies for the collection of fees. Violation of the law may subject the educational institutions to administrative sanctions. The Anti-No Permit, No Exam Act will take effect into law 15 days after its publication in the official gazette or in a newspaper or general circulation. Meanwhile, there will be a mixed price adjustment on oil products by next week. The Department of Energy said that based on a four-day trade, motorists would either expect a stagnant price or a 10 centavo increase in gasoline per liter. Diesel per liter, however, would go down by 20 centavos to 40 centavos. Meanwhile, diesel price per liter could remain the same or would decrease by 20 centavos. The final price adjustment is expected to be released by Monday. Coming up, Russians head to the polls. Spain's parliament passes a controversial bill. And an American investor group may be trying to buy TikTok. Stay tuned, Matana Agla International will return after a short break.
Nandiyan po kami lahat. Kasama po namin Anonas Police. Expose. Mental health facility sa lungsod ng Quezon. Inire-reklamo mga kabataang nanatili doon. Napapabayaan nga ba? Ang nainom niyang gamot, yung gamot ng anak niya. Ang nangyari na nawala siya sa sarili. Viral ngayon, PWD na namamalimus. Nagbigay pa ng pagkain sa kanyang karawan, ating kilalanin. Mga senior citizen, voluntaryong naglilinis sa kanilang barangay sa Makati City, ating kilalanin. Kapado, alas 6 hanggang alas 7 ng gabi, ito ang responde. Mata ng papamayan. Let's live together, Sanet 25. Welcome back to Matanang Aguila International. Australia has announced the reinstatement of funding to the United Nations Relief and Works Agency or UNRWA for Palestinian refugees. Australia has been working with a group of donor countries and with UNRWA on the shared objective of ensuring the integrity of UNRWA's operations, rebuilding confidence, and so importantly, ensuring aid flows to Gazans in desperate need. This decision comes after weeks of uncertainty during which the agency faced a significant loss of support due to allegations involving Gaza-based staff in the October 7 Hamas attack. In January, Australia, along with 15 other partners, froze funding to UNRWA, causing concerns about the agency's ability to continue its vital operations. However, with the restoration of funding, there's hope for UNRWA's stability and continued support for Gaza. Furthermore, Australia's commitment goes beyond reinstating funds and has pledged additional aid for the besieged enclave, including a contribution of $2.6 million to UNICEF. Dozens of pro-Ukrainian fighters have launched an incursion with tanks and armored vehicles across the border into Russia in what may be the largest attack over the border since the start of the Russia-Ukraine conflict in 2022. Fighters from two pro-Ukrainian Russian militant groups claim to have crossed the border this morning into the Belgorod region that border northeast Ukraine and to have engaged Russian forces. Russia's Ministry of Defense and Federal Security Service, or FSB, has confirmed that dozens of fighters tried to break through into the Belgorod and Korsk region farther south. But the ministry claimed the Ukrainian fighters have retreated after suffering heavy casualties after being unable to penetrate into the border regions. The FSB claims that over 100 enemy personnel on either side, six tanks, a Caesar self-propelled gun, and 20 armored combat vehicles were destroyed in the resulting encounters. The Free Russia Legion, a group of Russians fighting on behalf of Ukraine, posted a video this morning claiming to show itself moving with tanks moving over the border. Ukraine also launched a massive drone attack against at least 10 Russian territories, with some drones reaching deep into Russian territory. At least seven Russian territories were targeted by dozens of unmanned drones, marking a second day of apparent Ukrainian strikes within Russia. Президентские выборы в России, то хотя бы как-то как помешать нормальному процессу вылезли заявления граждан. Первое, второе. The Russian Ministry of Defense said at least 58 drones were shot down by air defenses overnight and into the morning. Russian President Vladimir Putin said the two days of attacks on Russian regions were an effort by Ukrainian forces and pro-Ukrainian Russians to prevent the holding of presidential elections. Voting in those elections is scheduled for the coming weekend. The drones Moscow shot down targeted locations in Belgorod, Bryansk, Voronezh, Kursk, Ryazan, and the Leningrad region, Russian military officials said. The ministry had said that it had destroyed dozens of other Ukrainian drones in several regions within Russia. Mm -hmm. 
на, на одну, ни одной из целей, которую они ставили перед собой в прошлом году, они не достигли. In other news, Denmark is set to expand its conscription to include women for the first time in response to evolving or the evolving security landscape in Europe. Danish Prime Minister Emmet Frederiksen announced the updated policy aiming to increase the participation of young people in military service. Under the revised plan, conscripts will be required to serve longer terms in the military, extending from four months to 11 months. However, Prime Minister Frederiksen clarified that Denmark's decision to bolster its military capabilities is not indicative of preparation for war, but rather a proactive measure to address the growing security challenges across the continent. As a founding member of the NATO alliance, Denmark also intends to enhance its defense capabilities further by allocating an additional $5.9 billion to its defense budget over the next five years. Geert Wilders, the leader of the Nationalist Freedom Party, has acknowledged that he will not be the next prime minister of the Netherlands as his potential coalition partners have not backed him. Wilders clarified that for him to become prime minister, he would need the support of all parties within the coalition, which is not currently the case. Nevertheless, he expressed confidence that he would eventually assume the role of prime minister with more support from the Dutch people behind him. In the November elections, Wilders Freedom Party secured 37 out of 150 parliament seats, marking a significant electoral achievement and has since engaged in coalition discussions with three potential right-wing allies. However, disagreements over certain aspects of Wilders' manifesto, particularly the extreme proposals and anti-constitutional measures, resulted in a rift between the parties. Spain's Congress has approved the controversial and divisive Catalan amnesty bill that regional separatists demanded in return for helping the country's socialist-led coalition government. Ahora, como decía, con la ley de amnistía cerramos ese ciclo de decisiones políticas con las que buscamos acabar con el tiempo del enfrentamiento y abrir el tiempo de la reconciliación y del reencuentro. Ese es el objetivo. Algo que debiéramos de buscar todos los políticos y todas las formaciones políticas, pero que desgraciadamente no es así, porque la verdad... The passing of the bill, which was approved by 178 votes to 172 in Spain's 350-seat parliament, will come as a relief for the Prime Minister, Pedro Sánchez, who has staked his political future on the concession. The vote was held amid heightened political tensions, and a day after Catalonia's president, Pere Aragones, called an early regional election after the defeat of his government's budget in the Catalan Assembly. Although the Conservative People's Party of Partido Popular won the last NAP election, it was unable to attract enough support to oust the Sanchez government, even with the backing of the far-right Vox party. Sanchez's Spanish Socialist Workers' Party managed to form a new minority coalition government after securing the support of the two main Catalan pro-independence parties by offering an amnesty for those involved in the unilateral effort to secede from Spain that culminated in the illegal independence referendum. The draft law will apply to about 400 people involved in the symbolic independence referendum and the poll that followed three years later, leading to a unilateral declaration of regional independence independence that plunged Spain into its worst political crisis for four decades. Sí. Seguirem en el camí de l'alliberament nacional. Ho farem pels conductes democràtics, pacífics, cívics i dialogats, perquè és la nostra empremta política, és la nostra ADN polític. I ho farem malgrat totes les oposicions que hi pugui haver. People across Russia and its annex regions are heading to the polls to decide the country's next president. Reports say that the voting could take up to 
three days since Russia is a huge country sitting in 11 time zones. Russia is so big that its electoral commission uses helicopters to access remote areas in Siberia to stage pop-up voting stations. Political analysts expect only one outcome, and that is incumbent President Vladimir Putin will win and secure a fifth term as Russia's president. Despite being the front runner, President Putin calls on Russians to vote at a difficult time for a country and as a sign of patriotism for Moscow. Прошу вас прийти на выборы и выразить свою гражданскую и патриотическую позицию. Проголосовать за выбранного вами своего кандидата за успешное будущее нашей любимой России. Участие в выборах сегодня – это и есть проявление патриотических чувств. Это хорошо понимают жители Донбасса и Новороссии, которые в тяжелейших условиях голосовали на референдумах за единство с Россией. И в эти дни также сделают свой выбор. Analysts believe President Putin has effectively shown that he is Russia's crisis manager. He came into the Kremlin at a time when Russia was facing terrorism and insurgency in the Caucasus. Putin was present when the Russian economy was in disarray and NATO was bombing former Yugoslavia. Some argue that most Russian voters are not prepared to see the presidential seat change while the Ukraine war is going on. Besides, some experts point out that nobody poses a serious obstacle to another six years of rule by President Putin. Putin is up against a trio of good contenders, Nikolai Karitonov, who has served in the state Duma since 1994, Leonid Slutsky of the Nationalist Liberal Democratic Party, and Vladislav Davankov of the New People Party. But none of his opponents criticized Putin's policies. Media reports also, or also observed that Putin's opponents appear to support Russia's special military operations in Ukraine. These conclusions often lead many to claim that Putin will be victorious in this year's election, meaning President Putin is likely to remain in power until at least 2030, by which time he will be 77 years old. Nonetheless, the election will be closely watched by world leaders as this will determine the landscape of the conflict between Moscow and Kyiv. French President Emmanuel Macron even asserts that Europe had to be ready to respond to an escalation if Russia wins the Ukraine war. Seven passengers from the Alaska Airlines flight, which had to make an emergency landing after a door-sized panel blew off the plane, are taking legal action against both the airline and the aircraft's manufacturer, Boeing. Among the plaintiffs is Kuang Tran, who was seated near the door plug that blew out midair, resulting in rapid depressurization inside the cabin of the Boeing 737 MAX 9 jet. Tran's seatbelt saved him as air rushed out of the hole, causing the loss of personal belongings such as a pair of socks, one shoe, and his iPhone. Kuang Tran, along with six other passengers who endured physical injuries and feared for their lives during the incident, are collectively suing Alaska Airlines, Boeing, and Spirit Aero Systems, the plane's supplier. The lawsuit was filed on Thursday in Washington's King County Superior Court, adding to several other legal actions initiated by passengers of the same flight. These include a separate lawsuit filed by 22 passengers in King County, another brought by three Oregon passengers, and a federal court case representing 33 passengers. Up next... Find out how the Iglesia Ni Cristo offers help to the people of Africa. And SpaceX's third flight breaks the atmosphere but is lost on re-entry. Matana Agal International will be back with more global news. Stay tuned.
more ng mga bagong salita? Same here! Kaya naman, tara na't sama-sama nating alamin ang mga Gen Z slang at iba pang expressions from different generations. Change will always be inevitable. As time progress, magbabago po yung lingwahe natin. Nagkakaroon po ng gap kapag uh, hindi po natin na-address yun. Kung hindi natin respetuhin ang pagbabago with each of the generation, hindi tayo magkakaroon na magandang relationship with each other. Abangan ang exciting na kwentuhan sa ituwang tahanan. Tuwing Sabado at Linggo, alas 8 ng umaga, dito lang sa Net25. Let's get together. Open for business with Cesar Vallejos every Sunday, 9 p.m. Let's get together. Sunday 25. Sunday 25. This is Sarah Katsabe. She collects plastic bottles for a living. And this is how she starts her day. While other people from other parts of the world are preparing their breakfast, Sarah is usually seen segregating her gathered trash. <laughs> Visiting Sarah's small village in Kampala, Uganda, it's noticeable how their living areas vary in sizes and with the materials used. A typical house that you'll see in this area, they come in different uh, sizes and different units. There's a, what we call a business class. Business class is actually something like this. It's made of stone and cement, so they pay rent, those who can afford can pay this much rent. There's an economy, which we uh, say here, and this is it. It's actually made of mud and timber, wood, and this is what Sarah can afford. And this is where Sarah lives. To say that the house is crammed is an understatement. And to see where they cook their food, one only needs to turn around. Oh, here. Oh, so it's, uh, that's your stove. When asked about how many times they eat a day, eat once. Once you eat yeah. once, and when? Yes, only oh, up. Okay, so this is your sack of bottles. So Sarah, how many days would you need to fill up a sack like this? Mm, and this will be how many kilos? Should be. So seven kilos times two, the, the, these would be 14 kilos. If you sell 14 kilos, how much would that be in shillings? Wow. So in dollars, that would be about a dollar and uh, 50, a dollar and 60. Patrick tries to help his mama in every way he can, even in doing household chores like fetching water from the village sewer. This is their source of drinking water as well. Aside from using it for washing and cooking, they also drink this water. It's water coming from the sewers, and it's liquid gold to them. This murky water obviously isn't clean. Boiling it is their only viable solution to make it safe to drink. The irony of living in poverty while residing in Kampala, Uganda's capital city, couldn't be more pronounced by Sarah's plight. In Uganda, 41% of the population live less than $1.90 a day, or roughly 100 pesos a day. 
nearly 50% of children in Uganda do not finish primary school. And almost half of the total population in Uganda is under the age of 15, making it one of the youngest populations in the world. His name is Saulus. In ideal circumstances, one would expect to see him relaxing and enjoying his retirement. But in Saulus's situation, that is simply not possible. The sad reality is that at his age, Saulus still has to work. <laughs> Working two jobs in a day with the aim of putting enough food on the table, but still, it's not enough to provide for his wife and his four children. And as the drought and famine worsen in Malawi, the number of people projected to face hunger in the country this year has increased to 4.4 million from 3.9 million last year. According to studies conducted by the World Bank, Malawi is the fourth poorest country in the world, with 70% of its people living on less than $1.90 a day or roughly 100 pesos a day. Pretty much the same average wage rate that you'll see in Uganda. Malawi is widely known as the warm heart of Africa because of the generosity and kindness of its people despite the hardships that they face on a daily basis. And it's especially heartwarming when much needed help and support come their way. Together with Saulus and Sarah, thousands from different parts of Africa have benefited from the recently concluded Care for Humanity event. The event was just one of the many efforts of the Iglesia Ni Cristo in helping and in reaching out to people in need in more than 40 countries in Africa and its neighboring regions. The Iglesia Ni Cristo recognizes the importance of activities like Care for Humanity in giving immediate assistance to the poor people of Africa. But more than just providing food parcels, the Iglesia Ni Cristo conducted several long-term projects in order to provide a more sustainable livelihood. We visited two of the eco farms in Malawi and we have met some of the Malawians who had the opportunity to finally secure a stable job through the project. My name is William Gama. I'm 48 years old. I'm working at Nagondwa as a task manager. Hello, William. Hello, Tony. <laughs> how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. I'm good, I'm Welcome good. to Nagondwa Eco Farm. The Church of Christ bought these two farms. Uh, more people. Uh, get an opportunity to, to come to work so that they can uh, earn their living. Uh, my name is Abel Kaoma. I'm a pumper, papa, water pump operator. Uh, waking at uh, 4 o'clock in the morning to make sure that the, the water everywhere because we use the, the same water to get in the, the crops. My name is Eunice Kadula, 35 years old. 
Kumaso Amatanis and Hojo won't be the horses about candidate. Aside from the two bustling farms in Malawi, the impoverished residents in neighboring South Africa are now proud beneficiaries of Iglesia Ni Cristo's thriving eco-farming projects. I'm the one who is putting the food on the table. I can provide everything for them from now on because of eco-farming. I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful for the church. I am thankful and grateful for the eco farm and the church for the way they changed our lives. I also get to help at home. These projects that have held strong roots in Africa are positive additions to other livelihood projects initially created by the Iglesia de Cristo in the Philippines. Canada. Aside from our eco-farming projects, a great number of citizens are now benefiting from the garment factory of Iglesia Ni Cristo. I would like to thank uh, the Church of Christ under the administration of Brother Eduardo Vimanalo for showing love to us. Thank you for uh, eco-farming, thank you for care for humanity. On top of that, we receive the spiritual weights, which is the food for our souls, so that after this life, we have uh, salvation. Many who have been introduced to the Church of Christ immediately felt its love and concern, but also joined primarily because of what was taught to them. They preach about the Bible. The minister would give us an opportunity to ask questions. All the questions were answered by the scriptures. So I got to understand that really this is the true church. I'm so happy that now we talk to our God and we know that the true God is God the Father. I am fully a member of the Church of Christ and now I have joined that body that will truly be saved come judgment day. Thank you, Brother Edward Ovi Manalo for the ministers you've sent to us. We really appreciate because they are doing a very good job. They are really changing our lives. I'm very, very happy to worship our only true God, who is our Father in heaven. We have the hope that whatever we have in this world, whatever, whatever the problems we face in this world, we have our God on our side. And for each passing day, we witness the Church of Christ's phenomenal growth. Starting only from a few hundred to presently thousands of new members. And as life gets harder, so is the intensity to aid others because we, Church of Christ members, are motivated by faith in pleasing God through helping others in need and making them believe that indeed there is hope for Africa. SpaceX had some success in its latest attempt to launch the world's most powerful rocket. On Thursday, Starship flew in further, or flew further and faster than ever before during its third test launch, although it was eventually lost as it re-entered the atmosphere over the Indian Ocean. And Marie Gonzalez has more. Liftoff from the SpaceX's Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas, came at 8.25 local time Thursday morning. The sleek mega-rocket is vital to NASA's plans for landing astronauts on the moon later this decade, and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk's hopes of eventually colonizing Mars. 
Scrutiny was high for Thursday's test flight after two prior attempts ended in spectacular explosions. The company says the failures are an acceptable cost in its rapid trial and error approach to accelerate development. The rocket is designed to eventually be fully reusable. Starship flew halfway around the globe before beginning its descent over the Indian Ocean. But ground control stopped receiving signals 49 minutes into the flight. It declared the vessel lost and probably destroyed before it could achieve a planned hard splashdown. The lower stage booster also failed to make a successful water landing. It currently costs SpaceX around $90 million to build each Starship. Anne Marie Gonzalez from Adanang Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. Into flight. We are feeling the rumble. We are seeing Coming right up. Shohei Otani's wife sends the internet on an investigation. The Eras Tour is coming to screens near you. And Justin Timberlake has a few tricks up his sleeve for his new album. Catch more news in sports and entertainment when we return. Ulo mo. Hindi eh, ba init ang ulo ko? Mainit ang panahon. Oo nga pala. Tag-init na nga pala ngayon. At dahil dyan, may tips kami para sa'yo. Ngayong Fire Prevention Month. Bunutin sa saksakan ng mga appliances pagkatapos gamitin. Iwasan ang pagkakasaksak ng maraming devices sa isang extension cord. Itabi ang mga flammable item sa ligtas na lugar. Laging isara ang gas tank kapag ka hindi na ginagamit. Magkaroon ng fire extinguisher. Stay cool and chill! Huwag makisabay sa ihinit ng panahon. Bilis sa patang talino para manalo. Kailangan nilang bilis na kamay para hindi matalo. Please welcome our Tra Gamers na Models! Ano ka? Kaya naman ipapasa yung tanong na yan. Sa'yo! <laughs> Sa'yo na lang! Ano ang tawag sa isang strand? Nang spaghetti. Spaghetti rin. <laughs> ano tawag sa isang strand ng spaghetti? Spaghetti rin. And this is The Game! Again! Again! Level up! Let's get together. Norway's royal court said King Harald will receive a permanent pacemaker device to boost his heart rate. Meanwhile, Crown Prince Hakon carries out his father's duties in the king's absence. King Harald received a temporary pacemaker on Saturday after being hospitalized for an infection while on a private trip in Malaysia. The royal court explained that King Harald's infection is now more under control, but he has a low heart rate and will need a permanent pacemaker. The time for inserting the device will be determined once the king's infection has healed entirely and the monarch would most likely remain in hospital until next week. At 87 years old, King Harold is Europe's oldest living monarch. He has repeatedly been hospitalized with infections in recent years and has previously undergone heart surgery. The photographer who snapped Kate Middleton's photo quashed rumors that the princess's image was doctored. 
Princess Kate was photographed alongside Prince William inside a car on Monday. Photographer Jim Bennett, who took Princess Kate's picture, quelled online conspiracy theories, saying they don't change their photos in Photoshop other than adjusting the light levels if necessary. Bennett clarified that he and a partner were hired by a news outlet to get a shot of Prince William heading to Westminster Abbey for a royal event. When he checked his camera lens to make sure he had a frame of Prince William, he realized someone was next or sitting next to him and it turned out to be Princess Kate. Bennett's account addresses speculation that Middleton's silhouette was edited into the photo, clearing up the misconception that the image was released by the royal family. Japanese and South Korean press are abuzz after the L.A. Dodgers star Shohei Otani was photographed together with his wife, making it their first public appearance as a married couple. Pictures posted by Shohei Otani and the Los Angeles Dodgers official account confirm the identity of Otani's wife following his sudden but simple announcement of their marriage back in February. The couple was seen arriving at Incheon International Airport together with Otani's team for their opening season against the San Diego Padres next week. Before their departure to South Korea, Otani posed together with his partner, now known to be the former Japanese professional basketball player Mamiko Tanaka. Speculations from different media outlets already guessed Otani's wife was Tanaka after he stated little to no details about his marriage on Instagram. The 27-year-old Tanaka formerly played for the Fujitsu Red Wave in the Women's Japan Basketball League for several seasons before retiring last year. Swifties are in for another treat as Disney Plus is scheduled to premiere Taylor Swift, the era Stuart Taylor's version for online streaming, featuring five surprise songs that fans surely won't want to miss. Catherine or two the scoop. It's here. It's here. My version of the Eras Tour is now streaming only on Disney Plus. Taylor Swift's The Eras Tour is proven to be an international phenomenon, and fans who want to relive or join in on the iconic concert experience can now watch it anytime from the comfort of their homes. The movie, which will be exclusively available on the streaming platform Disney+, Plus, will feature five special songs that were excluded in the initial theatrical or digital versions. Shot during her first three L.A. shows, the expanded version of the Eras Tour will span up three and a half hours, including the five bonus songs which are Cardigan, Death by a Thousand Cuts, Maroon, You Are In Love, and I Can See You. Streaming rights for the film were considered a hot commodity after multiple companies were eager to jump on the Swifty train. Still, Disney was able to claim the movie by paying more than $75 million. Swift also takes over to Disney Plus homepage for a whole day, where the service's main screen will feature nine sets of curated title cards inspired by the singer's different eras, including Fearless, 1989, and Midnight. Catherine Artula for Matana Aguila International. Trusted, connected, on point. Meanwhile, Justin Timberlake is bringing Sexy back, and this time he's got a few more friends with him. Gerald Blanco has the scoop. From the dazzling performances of early Justin Timberlake, to becoming the soundtrack of 2000s alongside producer Timbaland and Latina pop sensation Nelly Furtado, then giving us the smooth jazz melodies of the 2020 experience, and finally coming out of the woods in 2018. Justin has proved time and time again how his talent transcends time, culture, and even genres. Now the superstar unveiled his sixth studio album, Everything I Thought It Was, his first full-length album since 2018. The album features previously released singles Drown and Selfish, which debuted at number 19 on the Billboard Hot 100, earning Timberlake his highest debut in six years on the tally.
Notably, Everything I Thought It Was also includes a long-awaited reunion from NSYNC called Paradise, and the full band performed the track on stage at Timberlake's one-night-only concert at the Wiltern. Timberlake had already hinted at more NSYNC music last month, following the release of Better Place for the Trolls Band Together soundtrack. The star strongly hinted that he and his bandmates are cooking up a follow-up to their comeback single. JT and NSYNC made hearts race and set charts alive during their golden run in the 1990s and early 2000s before going on hiatus in 2002. The one-night show will be a hard act to follow seeing that Timberlake, JC Chazé, Joey Fatone, Chris Kirkpatrick, and Lance Bass performed their smash 90s hits Bye 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 and It's Gonna Be Me and debuted the new collaborative track Paradise. In support of his new long play, Timberlake is set to embark on a headlining North American arena tour. Gerald Blanco for Mata ng Aguila International. Trusted, connected, on point. And to send you off this weekend, here's a quote from one half of the Gorillas, the voice of 2D, Damon Albarn. Whenever you're writing something that's reflective, you have to put yourself through some sort of ordeal just to understand the way you're feeling. It's really life's contrasts that allow us a grasp of what it really means. For those of you who are still on the road right this moment, please don't fail to tune in to Eagle FM 95.5. And also catch the latest updates on our social media channels. I am Nina Ritchie, Alago Flores, wishing you all a great and meaningful weekend. This is Matanang Aguila International, trusted, connected, on point. Thank you for choosing Matanang Agra International as your trusted news source, keeping you connected to the world and on point with stories from around the globe. Follow, like, and subscribe to Adnet25 TV.